Nathan, do you want to you want to raise? You want to? I was gonna I was gonna try and do a Josh Groban raise me up, but oh, you you went there. You went there. All right. So oh, <laughs> it's, it's so bad. It's so big. Like this is intimidating. One, two, three, go. Greetings, I am Shad, and what on earth is this contraption that I have built? Well, I call it the Sword Guillotine, and uh, I made it to address a problem, a specific problem that I, uh, that not only I, but many people have seen and noticed and know about in regards to sword cutting tests. And uh, the issue is getting reliable results in a more scientific way, mainly consistency. Okay, because if you do a, uh, you want to test how well a sword cuts and you do, you cut yourself, well, the second one, you might not throw the exact right, same amount of strength behind it. Your form might be slightly off. There's so many problems that exist with human error. So the way to reduce human error is to make a mechanical system that can take it out completely and can give you consistent or very close to consistent results. Same amount of power behind each strike and, uh, and everything. And so to achieve that, I have built this but not only me actually i had some special help in building this and uh, before i go to explain how it works i want to let you know that you can actually see how we built it because there is uh, so we actually had a bit of problem solving to be able to um figure out the best way to achieve what we want to achieve with this and so i actually have a new channel called the shadlands the shadlands is actually a special channel that's going to chronicle the progress that I and my family make in building the, you might be aware, I want to build castles in the future. Uh, I made a video announcing that I was able to buy a portion of land, which has now been come to known as the Shadlands, and that I want to build our dream home, which is like a castle home, and castles on this property as well. And people were really excited about this dream I have, and they people have been asking for updates. So better than updates, a whole channel where you'll get to see and be a part of every single thing that we do. But the channel is actually gonna be heaps of fun because also we're gonna be doing a, a, any little project like building this, we're gonna chronicle, put it out in the chat. So if you wanna see how we built this, this whole thing, the problems that we faced, the ways that we fixed it, please go subscribe to the Shadlands, check out the video. The video where we build this will be out as well. I'm joined by my wife, my children, even my own father who's gonna be joining regularly on the channel and fun family vlogs, as well as project vlogs, us building things, as well as project updates as we develop the Shadlands, every little small step towards the large goal of building castles, updates on what the castles are, the designs that we're working with, how we're dealing with the problems, all those things. If you, please, don't, like, you, it's gonna be heaps of fun. You don't wanna miss out. Subscribe and check out, do you wanna see how we built this? The video is up. Go check out the Shadlands, go watch now, and you can see the fun that I had with my father building, because my father, he's a, he's a jack of all trades. In fact, that's what we're calling him on the channel, Jack of all trades. And, uh, and uh, he's a master builder, um, he's a qualified architect and construction builder and all that thing. Yeah, so with his help, this is so much sturdier than I would have ever been able to build myself. He, he knows what to do. All right, so now back to the uh, sword guillotine, and specifically, it is a sword guillotine because it's made, not only, really, this will be able to handle axes, pole arms, and a couple of things. So let me, as a wonderful gentleman has said many times before, let me show you its features. A couple of features. First one, the we made a raised platform, which can actually be put to any distance to accommodate any size sword, which means we can do tests in the sweet spot of swords, but we can also do tests for cuts down at the uh, the base, the strong of the sword, okay? To see how well different swords cut at different angles. <laughs> like this was an interesting um, thing, but I think we came up with a really good solution in how to uh, fix any sword handle because I needed a really good firm grip, right? But if I, but what were we gonna use? What would be the best material? But we've got this foam mat material, which helps squish, like cushion the sword. And by making this out of plywood, there's enough flex that 
the plywood actually bends in and cushions everything really, really tight. So this is a super tight grip. Now, one of the things that really wanted to get proper and get done well is the power of the downward stroke. And there's something to calibrate that we're gonna be doing in this video to figure it out. Because what we have here, see these, you might have, you're an astute viewer, I know you are. You might have noticed these, these little bolts going through. Well, this is like, it's not a pulley system, but it is. But okay, so we're gonna attach ropes here. The ropes go down underneath this one, and then over this one and hang down, and there's gonna be a weight hung right here. And so when we pull up this, the rope will then pull up the weight, and then what I have here, if we come around and see, there's a stop right there. So we will always pull this back to the exact same position. And so that gets rid of variance and everything will have more because as a result, we'll always be able to pull back to this position. And I'm kind of tempted to actually make it go a bit further. Maybe I'll lower it to get more of a swing. And then the weight will pull it down with the exact amount of force each time. The only difference that's going to be created will actually be the weight of the sword itself, which should be factored into uh, how well a sword can cut when compared to other cuts. So if a sword has an advantage of its weight, it'll get the advantage out of this system we have here. Now, as to how much weight we want pulling down, I was thinking about it. I don't want too much weight because if we have too much weight, once it stops, right, there might be so much weight that'll just keep pulling the sword through the material. Now, if you're super strong, you might be able to do that, but I figured the best way to figure out the fairest weight to put behind a strike will actually be a comparison. So let me show you what we'll do. To get this comparison, to try and get an idea of the downwards force that should be fairly applied to this comparison, let me, let me put this sword away in a safe spot. We have a set of scales here. I'm gonna put that there. And uh, to simulate a sword, so if we come around here and let's have a look at what the weight is, let's see how much weight, because I can put a lot of weight, so if we, let's get this, really, I can put a lot of weight just pressing down like that, but that's not how it works with swords. The weight they're pushing down is at the end of a lever, and because of torque and other reasons, leverage, the amount of weight that you can push down in a strike is gonna be different. So let's reset the scales and get an idea of how much weight I'll be able to push down onto it. So it's ready to go. So I actually can't see what that says. Nathan, can you check that out? How much weight am I pushing down in a strike? If I go, oh. Nothing. Oh, did it reset? All right, we'll try again. All right, so it's on zero? Yep. So if I go, how much weight is that? 5.9. 5.9, that's okay. If we do like six flat kilos, so that was kilos. All right, that's downwards. I am interested to see what sideways pressure I'll be able to get, but to do that, I need Nathan to hold up the scale sideways. So I'll put the camera back. Ready, so if I like doing a strike that I could put. 8.4. 8.4, that, oh, that's interesting. That's it, yeah, that is interesting. Oh, that's a lot more weight because I was able to brace my leg and push in like that, that's interesting. Because that actually has implications on my nunchucks tests and stuff because of the kinetic linking and stuff, how much force you can put behind it. If you have more, um, if you can push more off the ground sideways than you can downways, that is very interesting. It seems like the fair, if we split the difference and do seven kilos for the pressure, but if I try this again, what is that on now? If I like, 6.4. Split the difference. We'll do seven kilos for the for the weight that you'll be pushing into the strike. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. We are at exactly seven kilos. There we go. That's it. Now, I know you'll be saying that, or some of you will be saying, you're going to lose uh, energy due to friction um, in the ropes over these bolts, as well as the thing. Yes, that's correct. But as long as it's consistent between tests and it's losing the same amount of friction because we're using the same me medium from the same thing, between on this rig, there's test results between each one, should be very consistent to give us a good idea of how strong swords are at cutting. Now, in terms of how good swords are at cutting, sharpness is the biggest determining factor. And so, the ones that we're doing here, the swords are of varying sharpness, so mainly for fun, but also to try and explore uh, one, see how well just it works in terms of the cutting ability. 
And two, the cutting medium is gonna be very important. I've realized something. We want seven kilos of force at this point. And because of the rope system and uh, them being fixed here, to the point of rotation, that's actually gonna adjust the level of force that's being pushed down here compared to what's being pulled there. Torque, leverage is all gonna play that. So to get the seven kilos of force that we want to simulate the amount of force an average person could push behind a strike, we need this part, this part here, pushing down with seven kilos instead of um, down there. So we actually need to weigh this part and we might need to put a heavier weight at the bottom to compensate. Wow, is that it? That only equates to 1.4 kilos. I was afraid of that. We are gonna need to uh, get a much heavier bucket. Okay, so part of uh, this video is uh, um, working out the kinks and uh, we've loaded up these buckets. <laughs> That's a lot of weight there, but it's translating to five kilos on the, the scale. Five kilos exactly. That's not bad. That's probably doable, five kilos of force. So I was able to put on the first one around six, and then I got eight on the other one. Because I reckon these buckets, after the first cut, the, the, these plastic things, they're already stressing or snap. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was. By fixing the pulling end here, we were reducing the torque uh, to a considerable considerable amount, to the point that the downwards force was even less than the weight that um, uh, was pulling on it. And so by moving this forward, we now have increased the torque, and by removing this secondary bolt, all right, um, uh, that also reduces, uh, um, uh, I don't know, it's like a gear ratio almost, but not like a full thing. So what this has done, well, to do that though, when the bolt was here, I was moving over a very short distance. And so that was kind of uh, the ratio, basically. We were reducing the amount that this needed to be pulled up to, to bring up the arm. By moving it down, this bolt is moving over a much longer distance than it was here, which meant we needed more distance on the rope because as we lift it, the bucket was hitting this. So to get more distance on the rope, we've lifted the entire rig up to the point where now we can fully lift it and it hits the stop gap almost at exactly the right point there. And uh, we're leaving this one here because if, uh, if this bolt wasn't here, as we lift it, it would be hanging down from this point and be hitting the brace. So we needed at least this bolt there, so the bucket was lifting consistently. Now let's see how much downwards force is being pulled right here with the, with the new rig, okay? Okay, so. Downwards force, right here. Okay, and uh, what is that at the moment? Seven point, well, that's almost exactly seven kilos. That's almost exactly seven kilos. Well, the weight changed. That's almost exactly seven kilos. Um, I think it's because, we're, like, if I actually put this on the t very, very end, the weight will increase. Because leverage. Because of leverage. It's gone down. <laughs> Actually, no, it's gone down. That's right. It's gone down. Like if I put it here, 8.8. .8, you see, so even the torque versus from this position to this position affects the weight. But I think we are very close within the range of the seven kilo downwards force that we wanted to replicate with this system. We got it, guys. We got it. We're good to go. We got the right amount of downforce. Let's test it. So one of the next um, problems that I would like your, your help on to solve, and uh, you might be wondering what's going on with Boromir, check out the Shadlands, because the video is coming out to explain that. Um, on the Shadlands, the new YouTube channel, as I mentioned. Cutting material, okay? To get a good comparison, a fair comparison between the cutting capacity of swords, the material you're cutting into needs to be consistent. If, um, because we're going to be cut, like measuring how deeply it'll cut into the material. And so uh, it's unfair if you have one sword cutting into a softer material that cuts really deep and another sword that could be just as good quality, but it cuts worse because, or doesn't cut as deep because the material is denser. That's a problem. And so I want to pick a material that we'll be using basically on every single test that we'll be doing on our sword guillotine. But I also want it cost effective. 
I don't like tatami mats. I think the um, uh, material it's made of can have different densities at times, depending on how it's grown and things like that. So I'm trying to decide what, um, maybe wet, rolled up wet newspapers is a good cost effective option that we might be exploring. Uh, what do you guys think? Because I, I would like it, because here's the interesting thing. This is actually a good medium for a reason I'll explain, but it's too, like, we'll be cutting up and just throwing out too much pollution. This stuff doesn't bite a great well. I'd want stuff that can burn easily on a fire. We cut it, then we can go to the Shadlands, have a bonfire, and, um, and get rid of it cleanly that way. But the reason why a, po uh, a pool noodle is good, it's a, it's a uh, set chemical type of foam, which means very consistent. And the density is really, really good. Because the problem with wood, because you might be thinking just use wood, Wood is really, I know I've done um, test cutting before, and uh, if it's the same type of wood, maybe, but the issue with wood is its ability to jam the, the blade as it bites in. And then you can't be guaranteed, even if you're using the same species of wood, that it's going to be consistent between each type. If you're doing it on the same piece of wood, you can get consistent comparison, but you can't guarantee, be guaranteed that the density is going to be the same between each one, which is why something a bit more... Um, uh, I guess, produced. And so ballistic gel is reusable, and that might be the best one, just because we can reuse it. Maybe we'll have to end up ordering a whole heap of ballistic gel, make a whole heap of molds. But let me know in the comments what you think we should use as the standard material. But before we get there, and because we, I'm gonna help you um, inform my decision on that, in the meantime, we will be cutting, and look, just for once off, we can do pool, pool noodle, we'll be cutting random things and let's just, let's see how well it works let's do it i've got my um english tea hander here I'll definitely be doing so this is not super sharp and the profile is really bad and so i expect this to cut pretty poorly but it has weight and leverage behind it so maybe it might do a bit better i have my some of my katanas these are my sharp ones and this is uh, more standard size, this is more O katana size, so leverage. Uh, but my katanas came in a much better sharpened state than a lot of my other swords. This one has an edge on it, but it's, it's decently blunt. It's got an edge though, so I'd like to see what this one do. Because uh, when we do proper testing, we will be trying to uh, sharpen them up properly. But my gladius came particularly sharp. And so I think this is going to... Be pretty good. Yeah, it's still still got a good edge. I mean, I've been hacking wood with this thing. I've been using it as a machete. And uh, so how about we start with this and work our way up, right? There is eight kilos of force pulling down on this until it hits the block stopper, and then it'll just no more pressure. But that is a, this is gonna be this is gonna, gonna be a chunky strong swing. This is gonna simulate a really solid strike with perfect edge alignment basically um, and because it's chunky i want to start with a chunkier target this is a, a yoga mat but it's dense it's got and so i would be surprised if it chops through this whole thing but it might so uh, nathan i'll get you to raise it lift all the way so safest way probably this. from here nathan okay lift it all the way up and then probably move behind it we have the target in place. Three, two. Now let it like tr try and get a clean release, yep. so there's no friction from your hands. After as high as you can. Three, two, one, drop. That, that didn't do very well. No. Is, are, yo are yoga mats just really good? <laughs> padding. Padding, like. Huh? No, it didn't. This is like Gamberson armor. <laughs> this is this is potentially very good armor. It has got an edge. I was like, if I slide, cuts into a little bit that way. So what we're simulating here is a straight flat chop, mm. and that is not the like a, a much better cut is a drawing cut, and. There is a way that I can, uh, like I've already been intending to do this. I mentioned I want to make a drawing cut rig in the build video. And so what I want is to have a sword fixed like this and it falls down on an angle like this. And that means as the sword comes down, it's going to draw 
and slice as mm. it lands, which will give uh, another, and I'll, my hope is to test both, because I think a straight chop is also very informative to get an idea of how well things do it. But that was surprisingly ineffective against this. Katana. Okay, okay. I think, I think this uh, clearly shows this is a sharp katana. Give it every chance it's got by doing a sweet spot on the katana. And I'll even remove the block this time. The indomitable <laughs> yoga mat. Of all things. A flipping yoga mat. All right, lift, Nathan, lift. Whew, <laughs> that is dangerous. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Nothing <laughs> defeated is the ultimate thing. We might have to rename the video the unbeatable friggin' <laughs> We're making armor out of this crap. Holy my goodness. We'll quickly go to a pool noodle. I will lift. Three, two, one, drop. I was kind of expecting something like that. Wow, that's a clean cut. That's beautiful. Ooh, ooh. So the cutting medium is going to be very important to get right. We want one that isn't so easy to cut, hmm. that we want the blades to actually stop halfway through so we can measure the distance, um, but not so dense that I can't do it. It works. Uh, we need to see if the big two-hander will chop a pool noodle. Yes. That's what we need to do. Like I said, this one is fairly blunt. This shouldn't, I would, do not expect this to be able to cut the paper at all. See, no, I'll look at that. This is, this is not a sharp blade. Question is, can a, look at, <laughs> nothing. Can it cut a pool noodle though? Because sometimes, depending on what you're cutting, sharpness isn't everything, but we'll see. I just want to show you how well this system works. So if you come in here, right, you might be thinking, look at it, look at the amount of gap that this is forcing the um, uh, the things apart. But because it's plywood and it's flexible, look at this, watch, watch, watch this, just whoo, perfect. And then we, oh, that's such a snug, secure fit. That is, that is awesome. It works so good. Cause there was a bit of, we, it was a bit of um, was brainstorming to figure out the best connection method. See us in action, check out the, Shadlands is going to be a great YouTube show. It is a great, like, fun. So, like I said, progress, but also behind the scenes content to, and uh, and also building castles. So, check it out. We need to put like a lid on this. We're losing some rocks every time. And so when we're doing this proper scientific, right, we can't have the weight change whenever we do the, yeah. but look, this is mainly, <clears throat> this is a uh, proof of concept on it's our guillotine. Yeah, our, like working out the kinks, getting your help, like your feedback on what you think will help it out, but also just seeing interesting things. Let's see how well just some random swords cut against different materials. Pool noodle now. Let's see if a blunt sword can cut a pool noodle. That's like it has an edge still, but it's mostly blunt. So Nathan, do you wanna do you wanna raise your to I was gonna I was gonna try and do a Josh Roman raise me up, but Oh, you you went there. You went there. Alright. So oh <laughs> it's, it's so bad. It's so big. Like this is intimidating. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Question, can it cut a pool noodle? Yes, it can. With style too. With Those style. Everywhere. Uh, like, the cut actually isn't as perfectly clean. There is a, there's a bit of fraying right there, but everything else is pretty clean. <laughs> is this, 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 this cool? <laughs> coconut. Here is a, coconut is a solid, woody-like substance. Let's see if this can cut a coconut. All right, raise it up, not all the way, because I have to get too close here. All right, now raise it up all the way. Make sure it doesn't roll. Don't try and rock it too much. Three, two, one, go! Woo hoo hoo! All righty. That's actually a pretty good. Ding pretty good. Could through. you try and lift it? Oh. Not all the way through, not all the way through. Um, but 
But uh, let me, let me, let me get it. Is it gonna focus? I hope it'll focus. Look at that. There you know. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go back to the sharp katana again. Now remember, this isn't really katana versus um, uh, war sword, all right? It's more sharp sword versus blunt sword. <laughs> and it's not so, like a sharp sword most, versus like mostly blunt or, or not very sharp. So, Cause when you say blunt, you think like it has no edge. It had an edge, just not a good one at all. But yeah, I would definitely Consider it blunt for all intents and purposes of uses of swords. All right, that should hit dead center. <laughs> really, it looks like it's a guillotine. I know it's not exact, but look, yes, guillotine. Ready? Three, two, one, go. We missed, but that's a clean shave. Let's go again. Let's go again quickly. Three, two, one, go. Oh. 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 Did it nick it there? Or was that already there? That is interesting. I'm gonna try this again, just to make sure. Either this is an exceptionally tough coconut, but it was on the same angle, same power behind it, We've only lost a couple of rock rocks, but look, if we really don't, we'll put some more rocks in. The edge alignment is good. I'm going to re-clamp it. Maybe it lost some strength from the clamp, but we don't even have a block stopping it. No. So it's going even, it's putting all the force into the target. Right, that was at the good spot. We'll try this again. I'll do it on the other side of the coconut in case we just hit a really tough part. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Katana fanboys the world over have suddenly lost all hope in life. <laughs> There's a tiny cut, like a, like a flesh wound. I'm gonna try and cut it myself. I wanna see if I, even, I, I can cut it with my hands. Cause this is, this is very odd. The blunt two hander sword cut a coconut. Is it, are they just vastly different coconuts? So I'm just gonna go straight down. All right, from here, down, ready? One. What's going on? Let us know in the comments what you think is going on. Is it, is it the swing? Is it, is it position? Maybe, is it, was it clamped in wrong? I'm confused. Let us know what, like, this is a bit of a mystery. Let us know what you think is going on in the comments because we want this chopping as close to possible as real life. And if I could chop stronger with my own hands, do we need more weights? Maybe it's, Ma maybe, weights. Maybe it's the swing. It's only starting here. Maybe if we start it further back, let us know what you think we can do to get the sword guillotine pumping, like really, really pump. But I want it as strong as a regular person. I'm not sure I want to go over or stronger than a regular person. But that is interesting. Maybe, maybe that's an interesting note to leave the mystery. Look, we are gonna see heaps more of the sword guillotine on this channel, cause we're gonna tweak it. We might, they're definitely trying to do a follow up one to see what, what's going on. I would rather calibrate and get this thing working well before we continue on. But we will continue, cause we need to, so may, like, we, things that we can do we can try and change the angle of, of, uh, of striking. We could like make so the swords hit like this, but they're not gonna get through every single target. Maybe if we have the platform shorter, if we have a shorter platform and then we can put the swords in on an angle like so, and then they come down, maybe that could help. Um, I'm trying to think of any other things that might impact cutting performance. Let us know in the comments, I'm really intrigued to hear what you think, because we have some smart people, we even full-on engineers watch this channel on occasion. And uh, I would, I want to, you guys can help me. This is, because this is like, let's get this working as good as bloody possible. And then we can do some really scientifically valid, hopefully some scientifically valid cutting tests. But this has been a good fun introduction. Look, oh my God, we got a sword guillotine. 
going to be having lots more fun in the future. Thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. And I uh, hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. Also hope to see you on the Shadlands. Check out how we built this thing. And until that time, farewell.